Greetings everyone, Egos here. It's time we dove deeper with the next batch of intel coming straight from the Evocali patch, but before we start, I gotta get my disclaimer out first. All of this data is coming from different sources, like the Pipeline Discord channel, Reddit and a few other tidbits of information that get passed around as screenshots or pastebin code from whoever is doing the data mining. I am in no way, shape or form affiliated with the people who are actually doing the mining and I only report on publicly available information that is already out there for everybody to see. My job is to report on those leaks and do my own commentary and I take no responsibility for the truthfulness of any of that information. There, that was my disclaimer. And one last thing guys, spoiler alert, if you don't want your citizen con content spoiled, you can click away from this video right now. For everybody else, get ready, because server meshing is ramping up towards its actual first live release. Here is the basis for my assumption. This is Mr. Roger Godfrey, lead producer at Cloud Imperium Games, so I guess he knows a bunch of stuff. And here is what he posted on his X profile. So let me read this to you. Regarding the server meshing tech preview, I don't want to say too much without having a really good chat with the engineers, but we don't usually have that level of excitement at CAG without Jaffa Cakes being involved. And from this statement, I can speculate that today's server meshing test has yielded some very valuable data on possible fixes for its current issues, as well as further optimizations which the network team has already been working on. Furthermore, the September monthly report has revealed that the in-game mission system is finally completing its codebase refactor to be compatible and working inside a silver meshed environment, and an actual in-game test may just be around the corner now. And let's not forget that currently, patch 3.24.2 is carrying a lot of the underlying tech which has been transitioned from patch 4.0. Let me paraphrase what CAG Phil has written in his own statement here. To clarify some of the player's concerns regarding the sheer size of the patch, namely around 40 GB which had to be downloaded, there is a good reason for it. The codebase is actually coming directly from the 4.0 branch, but without the exclusive content like Pyro and some yet unannounced things, which by the way we weren't supposed to find in the Evocali release. To conclude his statement, Phil says that the next update is not your typical point patch as most people think. This right here guys is the reason why we are finding so many things that seem totally out of place in that Evocati release of 3.24.2. A bunch of stuff has slipped through the cracks and most of it is found inside of one of the DCB files, namely the game2.dcb. As it currently stands, the newest Evocati builds have been properly sanitized but guys, I still have enough stuff piled up here to actually continue reporting on it, so let's get to the juicy stuff now, shall we? So first up, here comes crafting and base building. Those two things always go hand in hand guys, and the first phase will always be base building. You will need a space to actually be able to construct any type of power plant or resource gathering system, which then needs to be connected to something, it has to be upkept with materials and some type of energy. Engineering gameplay is also a big part of this and it also has been developed side by side and we are starting to see the first signs of that. So let's take a deeper look at this screenshot here. That seems to be a list of recipes which seem to be for various types of parts that we will have to be constructing. And the way to do that is by utilizing some sort of 3D printers much like the ones found on the Drake Vulture and the Aegis Reclaimer. There is already a big list of raw materials and all kinds of other stuff which cannot be mined or procured anywhere, so we'll have to find it. And this is where the Pyro system comes in guys. It's the new frontier, it has a lot of stuff that Stanton doesn't have and it's gonna be very dangerous there. People are not gonna be getting any crime stat, so expect to get fired upon by any player that you see. The bigger player organizations are gonna have their hands full just trying to secure their procurements. And some of those places where people are gonna get hurt the most are the so-called contested zones. Those will be kinda like boss arena type spaces where players will have to survive a certain number of enemy waves 
and those could be planet-side settlements as well as derelict stations, where different pirate gangs have taken up residence. And if you look at those file references, it seems like there are certain types of loot that we'll be able to gain. If we survive long enough to get to the so-called reward room, the loot is split into several tiers and there is every indication that there is going to be rare or otherwise unobtainable components. All of that ties back into the crafting, base building and engineering systems. So keep this in mind, guys. Now, I've got one final clue to show you here. Several types of drones have been found. And there is even one that's called Xi'an drone. And I'm very interested to see that. There is not much other info on them since the last video, but there are entries that confirm their existence in some capacity. How far along is their development? I don't know, guys. We'll probably find out in two weeks' time during CitizenCon. This wraps up the video for today, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And also in the comment section, of course. Stay awesome.